Hey, it's Mel. Uh, last week I filmed a video all about the fact that I learned that the breast implants that I had put in four and a half years ago have been recalled due to a link to lymph noma. And in a couple weeks I'm having explant surgery and uh, I was blown away by the number of you that are interested in this subject, that had questions about this subject. And so I've decided that we're gonna do a series of videos answering your questions about everything related to explant surgery, to the decision to get my implants removed, to what the experience is like. And of course, if you or somebody that you love is thinking about it, the things that you should be thinking about. We're gonna answer uh, the most frequently asked questions. And if in watching this, you're thinking, I've got a question for Mel, please send them in the comments below or send me an email to whatthemel at melrobbins.com put in the subject line that you've got a question about uh, the explant surgery or breast implants or whatever, and uh, we may answer your question in one of the upcoming videos where I document the whole experience of learning that my implants had been recalled, figuring out what to do with explant surgery, what the recovery is like, how I'm feeling, all that kind of stuff. Now let's jump in to your most frequently asked questions. So the first question that I got a lot was, Mel, why did you get implants? Well, the reason why I got implants, and I got them almost five years ago, I'm 52 years old, so I got them when I was 47 years old, is because after having three children who breastfed, just the natural gravitational pull of Mother Earth, my boobs looked like cow tongues that were hanging off my body. And you know, I'm a big body positivity person. I can reframe any negative thought into a positive one all day long. But the truth is, I started to feel very self-conscious about my body when I was naked. And I also started to notice, and this might be too much information, so close your ears if you don't wanna hear this kind of detail. I'm crazy in love with my husband and we have a great sex life. And I was starting to feel extremely in my head. I wasn't present when we were being intimate because I was thinking about, you know, the skin flaps here flapping around. And Chris didn't care. Chris, Chris didn't care at all. I cared. And so I had a couple friends who had gotten implants. They had very, I guess you would say, natural slash conservative stuff. It wasn't like they had the boobs up to here and the cleavage, cleavage like this. And if that's what you love, that's what, you know, that's more part. That's not what I wanted at all. I've never been chesty. I'm a very active person. And so I didn't want big boobs in my way. I didn't want boobs to be the thing that you saw right away. But I decided after investigating that it seemed like the technology, here comes the irony of this. It seemed like the technology had advanced so much that you could have a quote, natural look, it would be safe. I decided to choose a, a product that was called the gummy bear implant that meant it was gel. So if something ever ruptured or there was an issue, it wasn't like saline was a spill into your body. I personally did not like the way it was impacting my self-confidence, my ability to be present when I was intimate, and I was just tired of complaining about it. And so after research, I decided to get them. So the next question that we got a lot is, Mel, were you happy you got them? You know, in the beginning, yeah, because I'll tell you what, when I stood naked in front of a mirror straight on, I looked way better. Um, and it did look natural. I didn't have these like high and tight boobs. They kind of were like beautifully shaped. They didn't seem too big. I was pretty happy with the result and it was a pretty major surgery. I had two different size breasts. I've always had two different size breasts. That's, that's very, very common. And so I had both two different size and shaped implants and lifts on both sides. So it was a pretty extensive reconstruction surgery and I was happy in the beginning, but then here's what happened. I started to become very self-conscious about the implants. So, ju you know, just like I was self-conscious about, you know, the way my boobs looked like this, I became very self-conscious about having implants because number one, I could constantly feel this one on the right side. 
Number two, in every photo, what I was drawn to immediately, any photo of myself, I just saw it chest, chest, chest. And I had never, ever felt that way. And the other thing is, is that I'm so active. And as I'd be out hiking, I'd like swipe it and I'd hate that. And then I'd go to hug somebody and I'd be worried about whether or not they could feel them. And then finally, I do a lot of yoga and I, they were constantly in my way. So if I was gonna do a twist like this, I'd have to like lift this up and pull it over. And then the other thing that I really didn't like is that because they were kind of natural looking and I wanted them to look a little softer, they sort of hung a little bit. So when you lifted them up, I all of a sudden had all of this boob. So when I went in to get breast plant surgery, I was basically like a 32B on one side and a 32C on the other side. I am a 32 double D or a 32 E, depending upon the bra. I hate that. But here's the thing. If you go and do something like that and then you don't like it, you then start to beat yourself up for doing it in the first place. And so I just kind of went with it. You know, I was like, okay, I made this decision. Most people keep them in for 10 years. I'll get them out after 10 years if I still hate them. Maybe I'll grow to love them. Um, they looked great. My husband thought they were great, but he really doesn't care. This was not a decision driven by Chris. He just wants me to be happy. So I was kind of happy, but I really kind of felt like they were way too big. And here's an interesting thing. I remember fighting with my doctor a lot about the size because I kept saying, no, 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 no. I want them to be small. I just don't want them pointed toward the ground. And my doctor kept saying, you know, I've had too many women say that they wish they would have gone bigger. And I said, I promise you, I'm not going to be one of them. And I feel like there was a game day decision made that is not one that I am happy that they made. I think the surgeon decided to go a little bit bigger than what I had been asking for all along. That's just my opinion. But um, anyway, so yeah, I liked how they look naked, but I really don't like them in my body. So the next question I got a lot of, so Mel, why did you decide to get them removed? So it had been in the back of my mind, at least for the last two years. And I have a very, very, very close friend who um, I know professionally, who told me that after her mother died, that she was getting her breast implants removed because her mother illness made her start to be concerned about the reported ties to breast implants and women getting sick and something called breast implant illness. Now, here's the interesting thing. I had never heard of this before. I had never heard that breast implants have been researched and there is documented studies that show that they can make you very sick that they can cause autoimmune issues, that they can cause circulatory issues, that they can cause issues related to focus. There are all kinds of complications that I was completely naive about, that I was unaware of. I'm explaining this to you because I don't think a whole lot of us walk around realizing this. And the other piece of it is that, you know, you tend to get breast implants because of confidence or because of wanting your body to look a certain way or wanting to feel a certain way about yourself. You don't really hear anybody say, I'm gonna get breast implants because it's a really healthy thing to do for my body. You know what I mean? And so I didn't research the health implications. I just assumed, okay, they've been approved by the FDA. Millions of women have them. If there was something that was going to be an issue with the kind I was choosing, I would be informed about that. And honestly, I didn't read the fine print. I didn't do extensive searches about breast cancer and whether they cause illness. The truth is there are massive studies about it and there are testimonials of, from women about it. And I have experienced, now in hindsight, I have experienced the exact symptoms that have been documented in the studies about breast implant illness. So I initially started thinking about getting my breast plant implants out because a friend of mine had just had it done and she had done it for health reasons. And when I started to look at the links that she was sending to me, truthfully, I was horrified because as I was reading 
the symptoms, I thought, holy cow, that's what I've been experiencing. And in learning all of this, something interesting happened. Because there was all this research, I now felt like I had a legitimate excuse to remove the implants. Um, I had been sort of making myself wrong for, for paying this money and going through the trouble of having breast plant implants put in and then feeling like a hypocrite because I didn't like them and then shaming myself because here I was wanting to get them out and what a disaster I am. And I always do this kind of stuff where I reverse course. And so I had been thinking about it for a long time. And here's the thing. If you're thinking about it, that's a good enough reason to have them removed. You do not need a study. You do not need anybody else like me or some authority telling you you should. If you don't like them, listen to yourself, okay? That's the reason why you should do it because you don't want them in. So give yourself permission to do what you need to do. So it was a friend who had them removed and it was then the research and I started looking into it. And then of course, what happens once you start focusing on something is you see evidence everywhere. So I started to then see um, stories about women having explant sur surgery. I started seeing more stories about breast implant illness. I started uh, noticing and seeing other people. I had another friend uh, that was suddenly having hers removed. And then of course, Chrissy Teigen got hers removed. And I'm like, okay, this is a sign from the universe, Mel. It's time to pay attention, let's go. And so I started researching who are the best surgeons out there to do this? Because my biggest concern, other than the fact that I felt like an idiot for getting them and then wanting to get them out so quickly, is that I didn't want to be left with this again. I thought, holy cow, if I hated this in the beginning, if somebody takes these balloons out of my body, it's going to be worse than this. It's going to be like, you know, this, like even worse. What would be left if I've stretched these suckers out and then now I've got them like hanging down to my waistline and I got to tuck them into my belt, you know, as I'm walking around. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so the next question that we got a ton of is how did you learn about the recall? So what happened is I researched all these doctors that do explant surgery, which is a different kind of surgery, by the way, than just popping out your implants. Explant surgery should involve a much more extensive surgery of not only removing the implant, but also getting rid of scar tissue, uh, what they call the capsule, and repairing muscles that have been sl sliced in order to get these implants in. Um, think about it like repairing a torn hamstring or an Achilles heel, if you will. It's that kind of muscle repair surgery. Um, so I started to um, research all kinds of surgeons out there and I decided to go with Dr. Fang at the Fang Clinic uh, in Cleveland. And the reason why I chose Dr. Fang is I have a very close friend who went to her and uh, her result was phenomenal. And honestly, like Dr. Fang is not only a microvascular surgeon, so she wears those little goggles and gets like every little piece out, but she also repairs all of the muscles and she's an artist in terms of how she sculpts your chest and how she, how she leaves you um, after the surgery, but more importantly, she is one of the world's leading experts on the topic. She has conducted multiple studies about breast, uh, implant illness, and, um, this is her life's work. And so I felt like if I'm going to go through the process of having this extensive surgery, I am going to hunt down the best possible person that I can find, and um, I'm going to go with her. And so that's why I chose Dr. Feng. Oh, and that's how I found out my implants were recalled, because I then went to ask for my medical records. And the surgery was only four years ago. My medical records were like in the basement of some hospital somewhere, which is probably why I wasn't notified. Um, and when I got the records, it was Dr. Fang's office that said, um, these implants have been recalled, Mel. And so that's how I found out. And we expedited the surgery because they have been recalled because they have been uh, connected to a rare form of lymph noma. Literally, I don't have the math correct here, but if there have been 
over 500 women diagnosed with this rare form of breast implant lymphoma. Like 480 plus of them have the implants that I have in my body right now. So there's no fucking way I'm taking a risk with this. So what symptoms are you having? Um, this is a great question. I've had these breast implants for four and a half years and it's only now looking back that I realize I've been having symptoms almost since I got them. And I've been so busy in my life, just like you're so busy in your life, that I didn't realize that there was a connection between the big balls of plastic chemicals that I've put in my body and the symptoms that I'm having. So the main symptom that I have had ever since having this implant put in is I have a ton of pressure under my armpit right here. I have numbness in this pinky all the time and it tingles and goes all the way up to here. I have Raynaud's, 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 which is a circulatory issue where my hands turn white and so do my toes. If I go to the grocery store and pull out some milk, it happens. It happens all the time. If the house dips below 68 degrees, my hands go white and my focus has gotten way worse. And what I've been saying to myself for four years is you're super busy. You have ADD. This is menopause brain. Um, it's early on. Like I just, I, I've been making up all kinds of excuses. It's because you are on airplanes 150 days a year and you're rolling your luggage with your right hand. What I now know is that these are all documented symptoms from breast implant illness. Because of the chemicals that are um, on the implant, because of how it leaches into your body, because of the pressure of it in your body and on nerves. And here's the big part. When they put an implant in your body, your body like might reject it and your body tries to protect you from it. So your body starts to grow scar tissue around the implant. And that scar tissue can start to get hard and it also can start to spider all over the place. So what's happened for me, particularly in the last two years, is this, this boob is literally growing. It's going under my armpit. If I go sideways and I'm in a tank top, this boob, it sticks out about an inch more than this boob. It's hard up here. When I go like this, it goes <laughs> This one feels okay. I don't really feel it at all. It's still like nice and soft and it hasn't really grown. This thing has like a mind of its own. Like two years ago is when I first started noticing, God, every photo of me in a bathing suit, because I like to wear the mallets, you know, that, that are strapless. Why do I have a half moon cleavage here? And then I was standing in San Diego, I love the story, with my best friend from high school, Jody Bricken, and we're sharing a hotel room and she turns to me, you know, brushing her teeth, and I'm standing there like, you know, with a towel around my waist and she goes, that's not normal. And I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, your boob does not look right. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, look at that thing, Mel. It looks like somebody took a freaking half chicken breast cutlet and stuck it under your skin. And it's true. It's like this big implant is just hanging out right here. And so that's when I started going, you know, she's right. It doesn't look right. It's called contracture, I think. My scar tissue is expanding and it is causing this. And it's probably why I feel numbness here. And it's probably why I have pressure all along here. And look, you know, I chose to get them in. I feel like I didn't have all of the information that I should have had about this. I, it's a voluntary surgery. And so that's also why you're kind of left high and dry when you do this right now. And I understand that, but here's the thing. If you can find the money to get them in, woman, you can make the money to get them out and you should because your health, your happiness, your confidence, taking control of your life and your future, that's the most important thing on the planet. So another question that I got quite a bit was, how am I managing my thoughts as I head into surgery? I'm not allowing my mind to dwell on the negative. I'm just not. And here's how I'm doing it. I talked a lot about this in that initial video that we put up that's gone crazy viral, um, where I explained that I just found out that the implants had been recalled. Um, when you get bad news, you got one or two choices. You can either let that bad news take you down a rabbit hole 
where you sit online and Google it and look at all the horrifying photos and read every uh, article and watch every video about it that scares you to death. Or you can choose to be optimistic. You can choose what thoughts you're going to allow yourself to entertain and which ones you're not. Because if I go down the rabbit hole, this will lead to worry, to anxiety, to shame, to fear, to panic, to regret, and all of these things right here. Do you think any of these thoughts and feelings are going to help me as I head into this surgery? F no. So you push them out of your mind. The only thing that I allow in my mind are the thoughts that I actually want to hear. You made the right choice. You're going to be okay. If they discover that you have the marker for lymph noma, we'll deal with it then. And one thing you can be sure of, Mel, you're not going to go through it alone. I've taken control of absolutely everything that I can take control of, right? I've found the best person that I have confidence in to do the surgery. I have cleared my calendar so I can recover for two to three to four weeks, whatever it's going to end up being. I'm using my platform to share the experience so that hopefully me going through this will uh, empower you to either make better decisions beforehand or empower yourself to take control of some aspect of your health. Um, and I'm also confident that I will be happy and healthy and so proud of myself for facing this head on. So all of those thoughts, those are all super positive thoughts because if I go into surgery feeling grounded and optimistic and proud of myself for finding the courage and the clarity to face this, the outcome's gonna be a thousand times better. I just know it's going to be. And so whenever a negative thought pops into my mind, I'm like, five, four, three, two, one, the five second will whoosh, off. You're not allowed in here. Uh, you're not coming to surgery with me. Only the boobs. And then they're going out too. And I tell myself, I'm not thinking about that. And I redirect my mind to the fact that I've taken control of what I can take control of. I'm proud of that. And if there's something to worry about, I'll worry about it when there's something to worry about. For now, I feel confident in the decisions that I'm making. And that's it. Regardless of what led you to this video and to this exact moment in terms of your life and your health, do not shame yourself. If you knew better, you would have made different decisions back then. But you know better now so you can make better decisions going forward. And that's what's important, that you empower yourself moving forward without making yourself wrong for the decisions that you made in the past. Got it? Good. All right, so this is a video in an ongoing series. The first one was me like kind of announcing shocked that I had just found out that my implants had been recalled. This uh, ask, this question and answer um, video is the first one that we're doing Q&A of. So if you have any questions related to this, just go to whatthemel at melrobbins.com. Send us your email and we might answer it in an upcoming video. Or you could ask uh, your questions in the comments below, wherever it is that you're watching this. Please share this with anybody that you love or care about that you think should watch it. And keep in mind, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, I'm not making any claims about implants or allergen or surgeons or anything else. I'm just sharing my experience based on what I know and what I've researched at this exact moment in time. I can't wait to bring you along. Uh, we're gonna do another QA video. I'm gonna kind of take you behind the scenes as we head to Cleveland for the surgery. As I am recovering after the first week, I will try to do a QA video within the first two weeks after the surgery to uh, answer your questions about what it's like to recover. My doctor just told me that having implants put in is a walk in the park. And explant surgery is a whole different ballgame because it means massive muscle uh, reattaching. And so it's a pretty significant recovery and I'm excited for it. That's the most important thing. I'm not worried at all. I am excited. And if you can ground yourself in being excited, even if you're a little bit scared, I don't like needles, 
But if you can ground yourself in the excitement about what's coming, that's how you can also anchor yourself in optimism. I hope this helps. I'm gonna give you a big high five. And in case no one else tells you today, I'm gonna tell you I love you, I believe in you, and uh, I really appreciate you being here uh, cheering me on uh, through this whole thing. Mwah. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like this video, I have a suspicion you're going to like these two next.